Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Source, and today we're going to be talking about a major cold front situation developing for Western Australia, where five consecutive cold fronts are expected to bring severe to dangerous weather for the southwest corner of the nation. And we're going to be talking about some uh, weather conditions, some rainfall and storms that are possible across central Queensland and the northern extremities of New South Wales over the next 10 days. And we'll also take a peek at the far north Queensland weather situation. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. So if you haven't already Already, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Give me some feedback in the comment section down below. But we're going to start things off with New South Wales and Queensland just quickly. But if you're more interested in the Western Australian uh, situation, then you can skip around to that part in the video's description. But yeah, like I said, New South Wales and Queensland, we do have a little bit of rainfall now on the cards for them sometime into the later parts of uh, this coming week or into the early parts of next week. What's going to be happening is one of the major cold fronts to impact Western Australia will be moving across the nation through um, Wednesday and then into Thursday and it's in spoiler alert going to drag a bit of tropical moisture down and as you can see here it's going to get jammed between this huge high pressure system in the uh, Tasman Sea and which is located between the Tasman Sea and New Zealand. Now as this gets closer to Queensland and New South Wales it's going to have enhanced moisture because it is just naturally a lot more humid over there compared to right over the middle of the Australian red centre. So it's going to be firing up more shower and thunderstorm activity activity from this upper level trough by the looks of things throughout the course of Thursday and then Friday next week. Um and as a result, it looks like it's going to be a wet end to next week and then a wet weekend for some parts of coastal New South Wales and Queensland. But the Eastern UF model is not really picking up on this forecast as much as what the GFS is necessarily doing. The GFS calling for this big cold front to gather a lot of momentum from thunderstorms as it moves through New South Wales Thursday evening and into Friday morning. Now, that is fairly uncommon for this time of the year. In fact, it really doesn't happen every single year where we see a cold front turn into a big thunderstorm event trailing across New South Wales. But if it does happen, it's going to be welcome rainfall for remote communities in New South Wales, which have missed out on a lot of rainfall this year. So it, I guess it is a good thing on the forecast, considering it's only going to be about 30 or 40 millimetres at the worst, and that's probably going to be concentrated further towards the east, where they can handle that sort of rainfall falling very quickly. Um, but in at any rate, it does look like a little bit of rainfall is expected across central New South Wales, and Queensland isn't going to be missing out either. There's going to be communities in central Queensland, especially throughout Friday, um, inland uh, north of Toowoomba up towards Emerald, uh, Dingo and uh, Claremont, that sort of area that could be receiving a little bit of rainfall as well, probably up towards 15 millimetres or so, maybe 20 if they're lucky, um, and yeah, once this front gets itself offshore, it's pr pretty much end game for the Queensland, New South Wales thing, the rainfall stops and races towards New Zealand, so unfortunately the rainfall won't be sticking around, but towards the end of this coming week there could be a little bit of rainfall through the agricultural districts in Queensland, which like I said, is much needed rainfall, uh, especially because it's kind of the only place in Queensland that has missed out on the rainfall this uh, wet season. So that rainfall will be very much welcome. And if you do uh, have plans of seeding um, probably sometime in the next week, I'd recommend getting it done Tuesday or Wednesday, just depending on the forecast, because Thursday and Friday looks like there's going to be some good rain coming through, especially if you do live in the southeast corner of Queensland. New South Wales looks like a pretty fair bet to get uh, a significant amount of rainfall by the looks of things, at least. 40 mil or 20 millimetres across much of the state and up to 40 millimetres as you get into the more drought impacted areas uh, between Albury and Canberra south of Griffith. Yeah, about 40 millimetres down there. And it's really only the extreme western ext uh, parts of New South Wales, the actual full blown desert, that's missing out on any significant rainfall. But still, a couple of drops are expected there. And southern Queensland as well, a pretty fair chance of getting up to 20 millimetres too. And the agricultural districts of Queensland between 10 and 20 millimetres by the looks of things. The Eastern Cliff, however, not so keen with this rainfall. They're calling for a very hit and miss forecast here with not as much rainfall on the cards, unfortunately. Quite a bit of rainfall though, just off the coast from them. The Access G3, which is not a forecast model that I like to use a lot. It seems like it's gonna be reasonably reliable though, at least for New South Wales and Queensland over the coming 10 days. Um, so this is a very good thing to be having on the forecast. Those green areas is more than 25 millimeters of rainfall. And as you can see, they are very widespread across much of New South Wales. I just struggle to believe that the rainfall in this case won't make it over the Great Dividing Range. Normally in a situation like this, it does. And I also struggle to believe that two or 250 millimetres is possible on the elevated areas as this rainfall gets itself trapped um, around Jindapine and Threadbow and that sort of area. That just doesn't seem like a likely situation to me considering
considering fronts like this rarely drop that much rainfall um, in just a couple of days. The one thing that I do have concern here, and this leads us on into the next part of the video, the more far north Queensland sort of thing, is the rainfall that's expected in our more tropical zones, including northern parts of South Australia, the Northern Territory, and Western Australia. I mean, I just don't see 200 millimetres of rain falling outside of Broome in 10 days in the middle of, uh, well, not the middle of winter, but in the later parts of uh, autumn as we move in towards winter. I just don't see it being a possibility. But considering the fact that there are other forecast models like the Eastman Bear and also the GFS that are somewhat supporting a situation like that, I think we'll meet the Axis G3 halfway and call for about 30 or 40 millimetres up in the northern parts of Australia. Like I said, much needed rainfall. They could do with it about this time of the year, just tops up the dams uh, as they move into their dry season, but I just don't see it being a possibility. It's just not what the weather is meant to be doing. So I'll eat my hat if this happens. I don't think it will, but there's actually a decent chance that it does now, about 30 or 40 percent I would say if I was to put a numerical value on it and up in far north Queensland as well we've got a couple of spots of rainfall especially just outside of Innisfail and the Cassowary coast here 130 millimeters or so expected in the next 10 days and I keep saying this basically every single video we come up here to far north Queensland and take a look at what rainfall is expected um, it's just the fact that the rainfall will not ease off up here it's, it's something that it should have happened a couple of weeks ago already maybe a month ago for these places they should not be getting 100 millimeters in a week the GFS calling for slightly less rainfall, but that's because of model resolution. And the Axis G3 model, interestingly enough, calling for much less rainfall and all of it to occur in the next five days. So this is interesting. Same with the Eastern Earth model. It looks like next week we might be seeing some drier weather from about Friday onwards, dare I say. I hope that that is the case. But yeah, it looks like next weekend we could be seeing some much drier conditions across far north Queensland. Look at that. No rainfall around the precinct on Saturday. That is something that we have not seen in many, many months. Um, the inland community is already drying up very nicely, but it doesn't look like the coastal areas have dried up yet. So this is this is looking quite promising. It's taken all the way into June for the Cassowary Coast and the Daintree Coast to completely dry up. That is very, very late on in the season. Um, anyway, just throughout the course of today, a couple of showers expected here and there. Nothing for the major population centre of Cairns and probably very minimal for Innisfail or Tully. But inland towards Ravensholme, Atherton, a couple of showers are possible through there. That's just a more detailed forecast for the area. Now for the big story, this is the West Australian cold front situation. I'm not going to call it a weather emergency yet because it isn't that. It's something that we expect every single year. But these are some very severe cold fronts that are coming through. And exactly what I predicted a month and a half ago now, winter is going to be late, winter is going to be short, but winter is going to be violent and it is going to live up to that prediction pretty much hand in hand. Uh, we've had 10 millimetres overnight. In fact, my gauge has picked up a healthy 14 millimetres, the highest accumulation that we've had down here for about a month. But take out that big big thunderstorm event that tore through the southern parts of Perth about a month ago and is the highest accumulation that I've had since September of 2023. So about what eight or nine months at this point. It's been a ridiculously long time but that is not going to be the highest accumulation for long. We've got some big rainfall numbers coming through. A little bit of rainfall expected this evening. A couple of showers that will persist in towards Sunday morning um, and Sunday evening looks like there's going to be a couple of showers as well. The real deal starts on about Monday evening when we get another cold front sweep up from the south. Uh, it's going to be a very slow moving situation, not likely to impact the Perth area, but communities south of Mandra, including uh, Augusta, Margaret River, Pemberton, Walpole, Albany, expecting a couple of showers Monday night. Uh, it's going to be Tuesday morning when this front sweeps up properly and it takes the Perth metro. And it looks like it's going to be a pretty calm front, just slow moving shower bands, maybe about 20 millimetres or so Tuesday or into Tuesday afternoon. And there's really minimal showers behind it, but certainly remember the rain jacket and the umbrella on Tuesday. It's not going to be too windy either by the looks of things. Wind's probably only about 30 to 40 kilometres an hour um, at their worst, uh, but we could still be seeing up to 20 millimetres fall on Tuesday. So some uh, heavy rainfall possible there. Uh, we'll take this rain... Um, um, what's this, a rain forecast rather back a little bit, had a bit of a brain fart right there. Um, and then later on into Tuesday, it's kind of when the real deal of the weather arrives. We've got those strong winds sweeping up from the south of about 50 gusting to about 80 kilometres an hour. This is a very strong cold front as well at this time and some thunderstorms expected. Uh, Tuesday evening, the chance of hail will also be quite higher around the Perth metro area. Uh, those winds are going to be bitterly cold and it looks like it's going to be a very cold start on Wednesday morning. Wind chills probably in the single figures and it's all 
also going to be quite wet, so make sure you're taking extra care on the roads in your Monday morning commute. It's going to be re- uh, Wednesday morning commute, rather. It's also going to be really cool throughout the course of Wednesday. Showers and storms extending along the south coastal region as well, and the chance of snow along the Stirling Ranges. I'm still going to give it about a 10 or 20% chance of snowfall there uh, as a numerical value. I'm not overly confident, and it has been dropped from the actual forecast models. But I mean, a setup like this is kind of hard to believe that there won't be snow. Now, it looks like it might dry out just a little bit Thursday evening and into Friday before the long weekend starts. Looks like Saturday we're going to get fine conditions until about 2 or 3 p.m. when probably one of the strongest cold fronts of the year moves in. It's going to be very windy, very, very wet Saturday evening, and this is going to extend into Sunday morning as well. I'm expecting 50 millimeters to fall after 9 a.m. on Saturday in towards the 9 a.m. on Sunday morning in the Perth gauge, at least 50 millimeters or so. This is going to be a very strong cold front, a very powerful one, and it driving conditions are going to be dangerous. Ocean conditions without a sail are going to be dangerous. It's going to be quite a sight to see if you're at Rottenhurst Island as well. And this cold front extends right up towards Geraldton and Calbarry as well. And just to show that it's not a fluke, the GFS model expecting it, and so is the Axis G3 model now expecting it too. So this is a set in stone. This is a guaranteed at this time. Very heavy rainfall is without a doubt on the cards at this time. And the shower band that sweeps in behind throughout the course of Sunday is going to make the weather very ugly, bitterly cold and also very wet as well. It's going to be that classic winter day on Sunday as we welcome in winter with one of the strongest cold fronts of the year and conditions taking all towards Monday evening to clear up. Monday night is going to be bitterly cold as well along the south coastal regions and that rainfall will probably take until about Tuesday to fully clear out there. Very strong winds are expected as well. I'll get into that in just a second. The Eastern Rear forecast model, however, expecting up to 130 or 140 millimetres of rainfall. The wettest places will, of course, down be, uh, will be down towards Harvey, about 150 millimetres expected down there over the next 10 days. And some rainfall, some good rainfall expected up the coast as well. And Gilderton expecting about 80, Lancelin maybe 90 or millimetres or so. As you get up towards Cervantes and Durian Bay, a healthy 60 or 70 millimetres expected up there. Even Geraldton expecting a good 40 millimetres or so, so that is some great rainfall to be experiencing up there. Calbarry, 30 millimetres. Shark Bay, even about 10 millimetres up there. And as I said, tropical rainfall is a possibility now across the Pilbara and the Gascoyne region. We're going to have to wait a couple more days just to see what actually happens up there. It's still beyond the five-day forecast period, and all tropical rainfall is very uncertain, but I will be bringing you the latest, so once again, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Um, the only places that really miss out on the rainfall look to be around Mount Barker. They're only expecting about 20 or 30 millimetres of rainfall. They typically are quite dry from situations like this, but everywhere else expecting at least 30 millimetres. And as you get closer to the coast, you're looking at close to 100 or 150 millimetres of rainfall. So this is fantastic news. In terms of peak wind gusts, as I said, we're going to be looking at some time, uh, what did I say, in, in towards the June long weekend, Saturday and Sunday, where we're going to be seeing the strongest wind gusts, but regardless, damaging winds are possible with the passage of every cold front, up to 90 kilometres an hour for the Perth Metro, uh, down towards the southwest capes, you're talking closer to 105 or 110 kilometres an hour. As I did say in yesterday's video, you've got all day today and tomorrow to be trimming up those large branches that are at risk of dropping onto uh, property you may own, so that is highly advisable at this time. Just make sure you're not going to get a branch come through your roof because it's likely from a situation like this. Also advisable to move uh, flimsy or loose outdoor furniture inside, especially if you live in an exposed location or your patio is exposed. It's not like a tropical cyclone for those of you up north who are well, who are probably wondering why I'm giving tropical cyclone advice, but these winds are very strong and they will be moving outdoor furniture around very easily. The Axis G3 actually expecting a lot more wind, in fact up to 125 kilometres an hour of it moving as far north as Durian Bay. This is going to be a big time cold front and wave heights as well, without a say, are going to be colossal we're talking up towards 10 metres as they approach the southwest capes and up towards 6 or 7 metres as they approach Rottenhurst Island. There's going to be some massive waves. Some coastal inundation is very likely as well from this sort of situation. And these waves making it as far north as Exmouth as well, up to 6 metres up there. And even as you get up towards the latitude of Karathi, you're talking about 4 or 5 metre waves. This is a big time, in fact, a huge time cold front that's moving through in the later parts of next week. So we're going to keep a very close eye on the forecast, keeping you safe around Western Australia. 
That's a long-winded forecast there. We do have a tropical cyclone as well, just to top things off. The icing on the cake, of course, in the later parts of next week and into next weekend. Something expected to develop somewhere outside of Seabreeze Village, south of the Maldives. The GFS not so confident with it anymore, obviously, because that cold front will likely shred it. But in towards the later parts of next weekend and into early next fortnight, we're going to be seeing a low-pressure area develop here with a cyclonic rotation by the looks of things up towards 40 km an hour wind not too far off cyclone status and it would not take much for that to become a fully fledged tropical cyclone so that is an interesting thing to be having on the forecast especially this time of the year tropical cyclones can occur at any time of the year in the southwest Indian Ocean we've seen it before and we will see it again however to be forming somewhere around here at this time of the year. And of course, very far away from Australia. It's absolutely no threat whatsoever, but just uh, something to know and something to look at in the forecast. Now, also in tomorrow's video, I just have a little bit too much uncertainty and concern about the weather systems that are going to be impacting the, um, the uh, eastern coast of Australia. There are going to be some strong cold fronts moving through that area as well. We're going to be touching on those in at tomorrow's forecast update. So spoiler alert, stick around for tomorrow's forecast update. I'll be giving a detailed forecast on those. We're just going to pop up north uh, into our local Southeast Asia neighborhood and take a look at what's going on through here. We've got that Bay of Bengal tropical cyclone that's still developing uh, south of Bangladesh. It has not been named yet. And the first tropical depression of the 2024 typhoon season just sitting uh, over the Philippines at this time. That's going to take until about next week to develop. This tropical cyclone moves into India later tomorrow evening. There'll be coverage on the Cyclones Extra channel somewhere around Kolkata or on the Bangladesh Indian border between Bhubaneswar and Dhaka, um, and then the typhoon becomes the main story into the early parts of next week, likely to become a strong one by the looks of things up towards Category 2's typhoon strength on the Sapphire Simpson hurricane scale. Uh, the GFS model has actually really dropped the ball on the forecast, to be honest. I think they've kind of misinterpreted the system a little bit, but the ECMWF, of course, picking the system up as being a quite a strong one, uh, which is kind of unusual. It's normally the GFS that blows up the systems to be much stronger than what they normally are. The outcome model not really following actually on this system, so it looks like the forecast has been weakened off pretty significantly for this system. We take a look at that tomorrow in a detailed forecast update on the Cyclones Extra channel. We're going to pan back to Australia to end things off this morning. I do hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like if you haven't already. Let me know what you think about the subtitles as well. Are they annoying or are they a great thing to have? Because I've just found it in the editing software that I use, and I do think that they are a great addition to the video. They make it a little bit more engaging and a little bit more easier to watch but anyway thank you so much for watching today's video a special shout out to the channel sponsors their names are on screen right now and their support is greatly appreciated but that is all from me and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye